Hi, I'm going to make a little clay angel today. I'm using earthenware clay. And I'm going to flatten out this clay with a rolling pin. Notice how I keep flipping the clay over because if I, if I just keep rolling back and forth and back and forth, it's going to get stuck to the wet canvas and not really grow and thin out any. So I loosen it up all the time and keep moving it to be sure that it's not stuck to the canvas and it's going to keep stretching. You can see it stretch every time I roll. I typically roll out um, for little figurines like this. I'll roll it out to the thinness of a squashed pinky on my board. So when I flatten my pinky on the board, it's a little thinner than that for a small ornament that's going to be just fine. So if you can see the body, the dress of this or a little angel is hearts. So I've got two hearts that make the dress and then one heart makes the wings. So I've got two different size hearts here. I'm going to use the larger hearts for the dress. I've got a simple paper pattern, just recycled cardboard here. When you fold and cut out a little bump and a peak and unfold it, it makes a nice little heart. And so I'm gonna trace that. I, like I said, that will become the dress. And then I'm gonna make another one because we want the two of them. I'm always trying to conserve space here. So here we go. I'm holding my tool straight up and down so that I make a nice clean cut. And then I'm going to cut out the next one, the smaller one for the wings. Now I like to use doilies to press into my clay to add a beautiful texture. So I always am looking for embroidered doilies and plastic doilies um, at secondhand stores and such things because they imprint the clay so beautifully. So what I'm going to do, so I'll use this one, lay that on there and press with the rolling pin. There we go. That kind of softened up my edges a little bit. I'm tapping them a little bit rounder still. We don't want any sharp, sharp edges. I'm going to actually do the other side too. have to be careful not to do it too hard because that would take out all the texture from the other side. So this is the dress. I'm going to use the other doily for the dress. Line it up in a way that makes sense. And so right here, I've got the center of the doily and then all these decorations coming out and getting broader. So that makes sense for the way it could be lined up on here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the center at the top and where the decorations get wider, it also correlates to where the heart, the shape of the heart gets wider. So I'm going to press that in and then do the same thing for this next one. Put my circle up close to the top where it's narrow, narrow in decoration of the doily, and the heart shape is narrow. Now I'm going to bring my dress together. So I'm just going to score and slip the peak of the heart on both of these. and press that together so gently. Nice and clean. My fingers are getting gooey and I don't like to work with my fingers gooey, so I'm gonna get rid of that, dry them out on the canvas. If your fingers are gooey, you're going to start to leave marks everywhere on your project. And sometimes you end up um, making, uh, causing wet spots that end up causing cracks in the end. So we want to be careful not to let our fingers be too wet. See how I've got my fingers in there? I'm using my fingers to open up the dress to give her give it some diameter so it stays standing. Okay. 
Again, that was wet, so I'm smoothing that off and drying off my fingers on my canvas here. Move that out of the way. And I'm not gonna put the wings on just yet because I want this to dry up for just, just for a few minutes while I work on the head and the hair. So I'm gonna take a little bit of clay to make a head that would be the appropriate size for the angel. I'm just making it round and then I make the bottom a little narrower. So it looks like a chin. And we'll scratch it with that on. Put that in place nice and gently. Again, getting rid of all that wet uh, slip. There we go. And now my instinct is to put the hair on because I just did the head. But every time I put the hair on and then try to get the arms on, I end up breaking some of these hairs off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my arms first. And then I'm going to let the hair fall over the arms and shoulders. So I'm just rolling out a simple, simple coil. It can be rolled in your hand. It can be rolled on the table. And I'm going to take it in the middle, fold it, turn up the hands. You see how I just folded that? Because that looks like she's got praying hands then. And then I'm going to put her arms onto where the shoulders would be, right? So now I'm going to scratch and wet that. She's still pretty soft but she's holding her shape quite nicely. If it, if it wasn't holding its shape, I would take some plastic and stick it up inside here to give it some support. Okay, so now I'm going to use my garlic press. This is what I always use my garlic press for. It has nothing to do with garlic. It's all about squeezing out the clay to make hair and nests and spaghetti. Go. And I just have to figure out how I'm going to style it. Kind of like that, huh? And another squirt. You probably already noticed I did not scratch and wet it because I just want to look at it first before I do any scratching and wetting. That works, doesn't it? Cool. All right. So now I'm going to score and slip the head. And again, I don't want to like apply a lot of pressure and make this collapse in. So I'm going to lift and support while I'm scoring and slipping. I'm going to score and slip because the hair is coming down the shoulder and down on the arm. So I'm going to score and slip that as well. And she's wiggling around quite a bit because she's all pretty, it's all new and fresh and wet. So um, I'm just going to make her and then leave her rest to dry so that she doesn't fall apart. Sometimes you can overwork something and then it doesn't, um, it just doesn't stay standing. It wants to give up and collapse. So we have to be gentle as we're creating our projects. Now I'm going to put the wings on the back. I'll score and slip that. And again, I have to be careful when I'm applying the wings so not to cause it to collapse and fold in. I'm going to put my hand up inside there while I scratch and wet back here. Scratch with the back of her head. And now I'll apply the wings to her. My fingers are in there supporting, so I'm applying pressure, but my fingers are in there resisting against that pressure rather than letting it collapse the whole sculpture. There we go. Nice and gentle. And then I'm just going to roll out one more coil for her halo. 
And I'm avoiding putting a face on. I feel like I lose some of the charm of my little characters when I put a face on because if I don't get it exactly the way I want, I'm kind of frustrated with it. So this is my way of just doing a simple implied face by not putting one on at all. Oop, I see some extra scratch marks. I don't want that left there. Okay, let me see her. Not too bad. There you go. Thanks for watching.